What's up guys, Houndish here, and today we've got some Destiny 2 new stuff to talk about. So of course, yesterday we had the first game update since the Warmind expansion. There's a bunch of changes and fixes in there. On top of this though, we've got a bunch of hidden content and upcoming quests that we can now see. We're starting to get an idea of how the new faction rally will work, and there's some pretty huge changes there. I wanted to talk about other rare exotic items, strike catalysts, new reputation systems, crucible labs, and a bunch of other stuff. So if you guys enjoy this video, a like is super appreciated down below it really helps me out on the channel but for now let's jump straight into the news So like I said, the game update went live yesterday. We've got a bunch of exotic changes and other bug fixes and stuff like that. On top of this, Bungie have also enabled or brought in some content that we're gonna see down the road. The first one here is pretty telling. So we can see a chain of classified quests. We've got the main kind of quest item and then a bunch of different steps. And we can see the main classified quest right here, an unknown quest. Of course, the one weapon which we know is gonna be in the game but we don't currently have is the Black Spindle. So personally, I'm pretty convinced that this will be the Black Spindle quest, of course classified right now, but also we have an updated objective complete for the Black Spindle, and all of this landed in the database with yesterday's update. So I would personally bet that they have made the Black Spindle quest live, or at least it is now in the game, and we may find that it's time gated, we haven't seen things like the Zol Nightfall yet, so it could be discovered via the Nightfall or via some other activity which is going to come into the game. So yeah, over the next couple of weeks I would get ready for the discovery of that Black Spindle in Destiny 2. Speaking of discovering exotics though, there is one exotic item that we've been kind of curious about for a while, and this is the Other Side Sparrow. So it's a pretty cool sparrow, I always refer to it as the Rat King Sparrow. Up until now, only a couple of people have managed to get it dropped, actually from Nightfalls, but it turns out, according to my Twitter timeline, and the many, many tweets that I got, that you can actually get this dropped in Heroic Strikes. I personally haven't had it dropped, but my pal Pavel on Twitter sent me a clip of it. He actually managed to get it from the Nightfall a few days ago, but like I said, we now know that you can get this in Heroic Strikes. It appears to be a completely random drop. I cleared three Heroic Strikes yesterday and didn't pick it up. So if you want a chance at this, jump into the Heroic Strike playlist and may RNG be on your side, I guess. Next though, let's talk briefly about the faction rallies. There are actually going to be some pretty significant changes to this event. Before we get into all of that stuff though, you will notice new faction flags around the tower. So they've actually kind of redesigned these. Pretty cool. We can see the new one for Dead Orbit. And then we have FWC flags and finally the new monarchy flags. For the faction rally though, it looks like there will be a new reputation system. I've spoken about this before and it's actually called Renown. So we can see right here, a new quest step. Faction rally is high renown. Gain renown by completing public events, patrols, and other activities in the world. And we can start to get an idea of how this is going to work. So there are some different lines of text which are actually kind of objectives that we'll see in the faction rally. And we've got, you've pledged loyalty to Future War Court in this faction rally. Equip the full simulator armor set from Future War Court during this faction rally for increased renown. And then there is this as well. You are renowned throughout your pledged faction. While renowned, your damage and health decrease and your health regen is slowed. Gaining more renown increases this effect, but you lose some renown upon death. Loot a lost sector cash while renowned to gain increased faction rewards. So it's actually going to be some kind of almost debuff that you get, and it's actually going to make content harder to clear, but it essentially will increase the rewards that you get for doing certain things. And there are a bunch of other new objectives in the database. Spend renown by looting a lost sector cash while pledged to dead orbit. Earn renown with full faction armor equipped while pledged to a faction. Claim high value targets targets and chests with the full Dead Orbit anti-extinction armor equipped while pledged to Dead Orbit. And obviously you get these for all of the different factions. So it's looking like there will be a new objectives and a new kind of reputation system. On the subject of that reputation system though, it seems possible that tokens have actually been done away with for these faction rallies because Renown appears to be the reputation itself. So we'll have to wait and see how more of that is going to work. There will also be seasonal reputation to unlock various rewards from the faction rally. So in Destiny Item Manager, right here we can see various weapons. For some of the weapons you'll have to reach rank 10, others rank 30 and then rank 50. And you'll also notice the exotic ornaments that you get from the factions. You'll have to reach rank 50 for those and for the new exotic catalysts. And those of course will include the Graviton Lance Catalyst, the Sunshot Catalyst and then the Sweet Business Catalyst. So if you want to unlock those, it's going to be a fair amount of grind in each of these factions to actually get them. Bungie say that the faction rally will go live next week and they're going to give us full details on how it'll be 
it changing later on in this week at Bungie. Next though, Crucible Labs is actually going live in Destiny 2 today. So Derek Carroll from the Crucible team said, the team has been working hard behind the scenes to improve Destiny 2's PvP offering and to get new content to players more quickly. With update 1.2.1, we shipped some bits that will let us turn our experimental Crucible Labs playlist on. And to set your expectations somewhat, Crucible Labs isn't a totally different game. It's not a different version of Destiny 2 hiding out on the Crucible page of the director. It's a playlist that will feature new game modes soon and some different tweaks to the modes you already enjoy starting today. Crucible Labs is a way for our team to try stuff out in the wild before it's done and solicit feedback from the community. We've never done this before and there may be bumps in the road, but I hope you'll come along for the ride and help us make Destiny 2's Crucible even better for all Guardians. So Bungie say the first test begins on May 30th, 2018 at 9am Pacific and that is 5pm here in the UK. So that's going to happen today. I'll keep you guys posted if there's anything interesting. Just bear in mind around the reset time, you'll be able to jump in and take a look at some changes inside of Crucible Labs. Presumably there will be kind of a patch notes section in there as well, which will tell you what the actual changes in the playlist are. So that'll be pretty interesting. Of course, yesterday though, in Destiny 2, we did get the Polaris Lance Exotic Scout Rifle. This was actually for the fourth step of the Nascent Dawn quest. So there is another step remaining, and a lot of us are speculating that that is where the catalyst for the Polaris Lance will actually come from. If that is the case, then we can see that the Masterwork upgrade will require us to defeat enemies with the Polaris Lance and its perfect fifth explosion to unlock the upgrade Obviously, we don't know how many kills, but it tends to be a few hundred. So maybe we'll discover that next week. On the subject of various rewards that might come from this quest, we were speculating about the Iris Pulsator and the Stark Baffler exotics. I personally think Stark Baffler will probably be the strike-specific loot for the Zol Strike. That's just my guess. I suppose once that strike comes up, we'll find out. But T1 Riot actually tweeted that it got the Risk Runner Catalyst on the 87th Heroic Strike Clear of the week, and this was last week. DMG did say that Heroic Strikes aren't the only strikes with the most challenging opponents, you may even have a better drop chance by increasing the challenge of said opponents. So of course he's referring to more difficult versions of strikes including prestige nightfalls. He did say increasing the challenge of said opponents which you can do with the nightfall challenge cards. So Bungie's official statement, or at least the hint, is that scoring more points is going to give you a higher chance of getting these catalysts and especially using challenge cards in high level strikes is going to give you the best opportunity. So that may be worth bearing in mind if you are trying to get things like the Risk Runner Catalyst or the Wardcliff Coil or anything like that. Finally, for today, of course, this week, we have one of the bosses for the Escalation Protocol. This is actually the fourth boss. This one is capable of dropping any of the weapons. So with players being slightly higher levels, if you can find some teams on LFG or whatever to jump in and do Escalation Protocol, it's going to be worth it this week. The boss is a pretty interesting mechanic. Basically, you can just damage him at any time. He doesn't have a shield or a mechanic to actually begin DPS. But any Curse Thrall that explode will actually regenerate his his health and basically the thrall will spawn in in various different areas and run at the boss and attempt to detonate which will bring his health back. So essentially you need to do as much damage as you can to the boss but also be ready for those thrall and make sure that you've got each kind of zone that they spawn locked down so that you can kill them on spawn and avoid them getting to the boss and regen in his health. It's not super difficult I'd say it's one of the easier bosses in general especially because you can do a bunch of DPS to this guy and that's kind of how our team were doing it so we just used melting points, boops, a bunch of Nova Bombs, shotguns, literally everything we had all at once, and we pretty much managed to melt him in around about 5 or 10 seconds. So that may be a strategy worth trying, but there's a lot of people hunting for the shotgun, the Ikelos shotgun this week. Of course there is an emblem for the Ikelos weapons, Morgan on Twitter actually sent me this. So when you collect all of the weapons, it actually changes the emblem or the version of the emblem, and you'll get this apparatus version of the emblem right here, and this one actually tracks the number of kills that you've made with Seraph weapons. So just worth bearing in mind, that is what you get when you've collected all of them. But guys, I think that is going to summarize the video. I do plan on making a separate video breaking down all of the exotic armor buffs and exactly what you can do with them. I'll also keep you posted on the faction rally, the events coming next week, Crucible Labs and any other news, including the hunt for that black spindle. Now that the quest is in the game, it seems very likely we'll get it pretty soon. But if you have enjoyed this video, guys, a like is super appreciated below. Let me know your thoughts on any of this stuff, as always, in the comment section. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see more Destiny 2 news going forward. Check out my sponsor Into the AM for some awesome clothing in their store. We've got some really nice shirts, hoodies, hats, accessories, Overwatch League shirts, and a bunch of other neat stuff. Plus you can save 10% if you use code Houndish. The link for that will be below. For now though, I appreciate you guys watching as always, and I will catch you very soon.